In the previous video, we looked at those autorhythmic cells and how they generated a pacemaker potential. So now we're going to combine their efforts and look how they affect the overall electrical events of the heart. And that's the electrical conductance pathway that's used to cause the atriums to contract and then the ventricles to contract in sequence. Then we'll look at how we measure what's going on with the heart, and that is with using an ECG so we can get an overall feel electrical activity of the heart. And then we'll also look at some arrhythmias. That is when the ECGs show some strange or abnormal types of patterns. So let's first start with the cardiac conduction system. These, all these cells in yellow again are those autorhythmic cells that generate their pacemaker potential and send impulses throughout the heart to get the heart muscles to contract. Now each of these guys, the SA node, the AV node, the bundle of his or the atrioventricular bundle, the bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers all have their own pacemaker potential. That is, they have that idea like here in the SA node, leaky sodium, and then depolarization by calcium, repolarization with sodium, or excuse me, with potassium. But how much they leak, which depending on how fast they get to threshold, is different depending on the um, cell. So, the guy who has the fastest pace or has reaches that pacemaker potential soonest is going to be the guy who controls everybody else. In other words, he has more leaky sodium channels than anybody else. He reaches threshold sooner, sends an action potential, and then that's going to influence the action potentials of all of the other autorhythmic cells. So that guy happens to be the SA node. So we call him the pacemaker because he's the one that's setting the pace for the, for the entire heart and when these action potentials travel. So if he's the first one to reach threshold and have an action potential, that action potential happens and it sends that action potential throughout the entire atriums. And it only goes to the atriums because if you remember, right at the level of these valves, is that fiber skeleton. So that fiber skeleton is like a wall, so the action potentials can't go from the atriums to the ventricles except through this conduction system. So that way the SA node sends all of his impulses out to all of the cells of the um, atrium and that causes the atrium to contract. Now the SA node also sends impulses to the atrioventricular um, node at the atrioventricular node, we have a slight delay, and then, then it sends its action potential down the atrioventricular bundles to the bundle branches, and then out to the Purkinje fibers, and that action potential then goes throughout all the ventricular cardiac muscle cells, and now the ventricles contract. So there's, again, the SA node setting the pace, sends its impulses out or its action potentials out throughout the atriums, the atriums contract. At the SA, or excuse me, the AV node, there's a slight delay. Go, then the impulses go, or the action potentials go down, the AV bundles, the bundle branches, Purkinje fibers, out throughout the, all the cardiac muscle of the ventricles, and then the ventricles contract. And that way we have atriums contract, pushing blood down into the ventricles, then the ventricles contract, pushing blood out into the arteries. Then the atriums will contract, pushing blood out into the ventricles. The ventricles contract, pushing blood up into the arteries. And that way the heart becomes a very effective pump. Now we can't really look at the action potential or the pacemaker potential of any one cardiac muscle cell or the autorhythmic cells. Well, actually we could, but that would mean stabbing a person in the heart with an electrode and that's a little too invasive. So instead we have the ECG, electrocardiogram. And this is basically, you've seen it all happen, probably you've set up, they put a bunch of electrodes all over you, sometimes it's 12, sometimes I think it's seven. But they put these electrodes on you so they're getting the overall electrical activity of the heart. This is not a reading of any 
pacemaker potential or action potential of a heart muscle cell. It is just an overall feel of what is the electrical activity of the heart. So the first wave we see in an ECG is called the P wave. The P wave indicates when the atriums are depolarizing. So here the atriums are depolarizing, they make the P wave. Just after the P wave, the atriums are going to contract. So notice it's flat because contraction is an electrical vent. Contraction is the myosin grabbing hold of the actin and swinging them, causing the contraction. It's a mechanical thing. So it's not going to generate any kind of electrical um, signal that we can read on an ECG. So P wave is atrial depolarization. Right after that P wave is when the atrium excuse me, actually contracts. The next part of the wave then is QRS complex. Now notice how much bigger it is. That's because, of course, the ventricles now are going to depolarize and the ventricles are much bigger, so they're going to have a bigger electrical signal. At the same time the ventricles here are depolarizing, notice the atriums are also repolarizing, but we can't really see that event because it's hidden under this huge wave of electrical activity generated by that ventricle in depolarization. Now right after that then is when the ventricles will actually contract and then the T wave is going to be when the um, ventricles repolarize and then we start all over. So again P wave is atrial depolarization then we have atrial contraction QRS is ventricular depolarization and atrial repolarization. Then the ventricles contract. And then the T wave is ventricular repolarization. Now when we look at a normal ECG, we can do all kinds of things with it. One, of course, we can get heart rate just by measuring from peak to peak. That's how long it takes to do that. Um, with in, or how many of those peaks we have per minute would give us a heart rate. If we look at these guys in close up, we can also take a bunch of measurements. One of which is called the PR interval. This one could indicate if there's any kind of what's called a heart block. Sometimes this PR interval will get longer and longer, indicating that the signal from the AV node to the SA node just isn't going very well. And, um, I said that backwards. The SA node to the AV node isn't going well and that then indicates that there's a block or something's interfering with it and so we have a lengthening of that PR interval. In heart attacks sometimes you see a ST segment elevation that is the S wave never goes all the way down here it stops here and then it starts moving down like this. That is indicative of a heart attack. Um, and then there's all kinds of other things we could measure on these to indicate that maybe there's something wrong with the conduction system in the heart or something wrong with the heart muscles themselves. So to kind of look at this in general then, a normal ECG is going to be called a normal sinus rhythm. That is we've got a nice P, Q, R, S, T wave going in each one of these. That's a normal sinus rhythm. Anytime there's an arith uh, or something wrong with the um, ECG, then that's indicated of an arrhythmia. There's some, something wrong with the conduction system and the action potentials and the electrical activity of the heart to indicate something's up. So if we look first at this one down here, this is an arrhythmia. And if you look, there's something missing. And I'm going to pause because I'm going to think, see if you can figure out what's missing. Well, hopefully you said the P wave is missing. So that's indicative that there's no SA node activity. That is, the SA node simply isn't working. Remember, the SA node is the one that spreads the action potential throughout the atriums for the atriums to depolarize. But if the SA node isn't working, then the atriums don't depolarize and therefore no contraction of the atriums. If the SA node isn't working, the next autorhythmic cell that is has the 
fastest pace takes over, and that happens to be the AV node. So the AV node will still fire. The AV node is in charge of spreading the action potentials through the bundle branches and on through the Purkinje fibers to get the ventricles to depolarize. So if the AV node is still working, it still gets the ventricles to depolarize. And so that's why we still have a QRS. And of course, if they depolarize, they're going to repolarize. So we still have a T. So the ventricles contracting here, but not the atrium. So you can live with that because gravity can get the blood from the atrium to the ventricle for you. Um, but it's not great either. Here's another one on the top. See if you can see what's missing on that one. If you said the QRS and T wave, you'd be right. This is called a heart block. That is, notice the P wave is, work, is there, so that means the SA node's working, but there's something blocking the signal from getting from the SA node to the AV node. And so in several times here, like here and here, that signal never got to or through the AV node, and therefore there was no ventricular depolarization, and that's why we don't see a QRS complex in either spot here, and eventually it didn't get through. But that's what's referred to as a heart block. And then the bottom one, which is kind of a total mess, that's called fibrillation. Fibrillation is when there is no rhythm, that is, all of the cardiac muscle cells, the autorhythmic cells are doing their own thing at their own pace. They're not any kind of coordinated pattern at all. And obviously this is very dangerous because if the muscle cells are doing their own action potentials whenever they want to, then you're not gonna have a uniform contraction all at once and you can't pump the blood out of the heart. And so this of course is fatal if it's a ventricular fibrillation. If it's an atrial fibrillation, you can live with it because again, you have gravity to help get the blood from the atriums to the ventricles, but a ventricular fibrillation, you have minutes to live. Um, so you've got to get a defibrillator, the, the pads that they put on you and say clear and shock you, that's the defibrillator. The idea of that is, is to hit the heart with a burst of electrical activity to try to reset all of those autorhythmic cells back to zero, and then hopefully allowing the SA node to take over as the pacemaker again and get everybody back in rhythm. Some other abnormal things with the heart are some heart rate problems. One of those is uh, bradycardia. Bradycardia is a condition where your heart rate is slower than normal. This is normal um, is dependent on the person. An athlete who's been training extensively may have a heart rate that is normally low. That is an, an average person's heart rate is about 72 beats per minute. Someone who's a marathon runner, for example, who's been running forever has a heart rate maybe of 60 or 50 in the 50s. That's not bradycardia. That's normal for them because they've been training so well. Bradycardia is a person maybe like you or I who, you know, haven't done anything and all of a sudden now our heart rate is really, really slow. Or tachycardia is the opposite way. Tachycardia would be a condition where the heart rate is faster than normal. This is not in response to exercise. Your heart rate goes up to 120, 140 beats per minute when you exercise. That's a normal adaptation to exercise. I'm talking about you're doing basically nothing that would cause, that should cause your heart rate to go up and all of a sudden it does. That would be tachycardia. And then ectopic pacemakers are when they have abnormal so signals that override the SA or the AV node. And so they're gonna disrupt when the ventricles contract. Um, a common one is called preventricular contractions. That is an ectopic pacemaker. Part of the ventricles decides to contract out of rhythm. And so they contract prematurely. That's why it's preventricular contractions. And instead of, and so they're contracting almost on top of the atriums contracting. And then there's this long pause for the ventricles are going to fill and then they contract. So it almost feels like you're skipping a heartbeat because the ventricles contract too early, long pause of ventricles really filling and boom, you get a big heartbeat to push all that blood out. Okay. So that ends our look at all electrical activity of the heart. 
The next thing we'll move on to then is looking at once we have this coordination, this muscle contracting, how we move blood through the heart and that's called the cardiac cycle.